Good evening, everybody. Everybody happy? I tell you, I'm happy the weather's changing. I'll just start with that. So thank you for coming. This is a Warrior Fellowship, this Antioch Community Fellowship. Thank you for being a part. How many of you have never been in, the, in this building before? Raise your hand. Wow, wow. Thank you for coming. We do forgive you because we've been doing this for a while now. Uh, but for, we like to give God the glory for uh, those who have never been here before. Uh, the Lord has blessed us. We started in the building a couple doors down, and then the Lord gave us this. Uh, Warrior Notes uh, came in and uh, really helped us up, upfit the whole place. They gave us the, uh, Kevin doesn't ask me to ever say any of this. I'm just saying it because I'm so proud. But uh, uh, Warrior Notes paid for the first two years rent here. And so as a pastor, you know how that comes in handy. And, uh, and then after that, uh, to a couple of doors down that way, if you got your coffee, that used to be CBD until we prayed them out of there. And, um, and literally we did. And um, uh, so now we have this, and this used to be a strip club. And this actually was raided by the feds at one point for gambling too. So we're in the right place at the right time to give God glory. And, and we're just thankful. Amen. All right. Well, before we receive the offering, I want to tell you a couple places where we're going to be uh, this week. Tomorrow night, we're going to be in, at Isaac Alba's church in Virginia Beach, Virginia, which is not too far. Anybody making that trip over there? Oh, a few of you. Okay, we'll see you over there. And then uh, Tuesday night, we're going to be in Hershey, Pennsylvania. It's going to be powerful. And then the night after that, Wednesday night, we're going to be in Battle Creek, Michigan. And uh, so it's powerful. And then... Uh, not too many days after that, let me give you the exact dates because we like to let everybody know online. We're going to be doing a one-night meeting in Scottsdale, Arizona on April 13th. And then, this is so, this is so powerful, we're going to do a Seattle, Washington conference April 14th through the 16th. And then we're going to head over to Hawaii. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Seattle, Hawaii, it's all the same. Uh, we're going to go to Hawaii uh, uh, for a few days there, and we're going to uh, head over to Maui, where we have a powerful Warrior Fellowship on Maui. They are really taking over Maui, the Warrior Fellowship. Uh, with outreach, there's a lot of homeless people in Maui. And so uh, Warrior Notes is going to be feeding the, uh, uh, a lot of people there. And then after that, we're going to be at the 1st of May. We're going to be in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And then let me give you a couple more. Then we're going to be in Branson, Missouri. Really excited about that. Then on the Pennsylvania Spirit School at a convention center. And then uh, for the first time ever, we're going to be, uh, Kevin and Kathy and the team, we're going to be in Dallas-Fort Worth, uh, the Dallas area itself, Grapevine. So we're really excited. It's, it's, the enemy has kept us out of there, uh, out of Grapevine this whole time. And we finally got in there right outside the DFW airport. So we're really excited about that. Are you excited as I am? I mean, come on. And um, there's something, uh, ushers, if you would come, ushers, if you would come, there's something about, uh, I know I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad online, but there's something about being in the meetings where there is a unique impartation. How many would agree? Where just being in the service, there's, uh, of course, online as well. But being in these meetings, I want to encourage you, come to the meetings. So many, bring your kids. There's so many wonderful things that are happening. Uh, but thank you for being part of uh, the offering. Thank you for participating. We believe that. God has really highlighted this ministry around the world. And uh, we're believing that this ministry, because I see it with my own eyes, this ministry is touching nations, widows, single moms, uh, so many people. The food pantry, the warrior pantry is growing leaps and bounds. There's just so many things. And you're going to be seeing it soon, in fact, online, uh, the whole missions, uh, what we're doing in missions. So thank you. If you want to give online, you can do the text to give. So Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence with joy, Lord, and it, Lord, it's a privilege to give to your kingdom. It's a privilege. It's just one, one other thing that we can do for you, Lord, is to give an offering, Lord. And we thank you for the opportunity to be a part and, and to be here tonight. And thank you for bringing Kevin and Kathy and, and Captain Lou here as well. Lord, we just thank you for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's welcome Kevin Zadai. Thank you. Amen. Are you ready? Y'all ready? Okay, I've been uh, I've been I, I've been uh, been ministered to by the Lord about momentum breakers, 
And so that word momentum is a good word, but the breaker part is not. So it's, it's one of those things that um, is just happening more and more right now. So the Lord has really ministered to me about this this last week. So because of that, I felt immediately instead of writing the book and doing the course and, you know, all that stuff, I would just release it now and, um, you know, clean up later, you know, with everything else as far as uh, the media, you know. So um, because the reason I say it, because uh, uh, last night we've had uh, almost 20,000 views on last night already. And a lot of people are asking if they can get the book or the uh, study guide. And I'm like, well, can you hold on for one more week? And, and, and when I'm done with all these messages, you know, that, then I'll start on that. But um, tonight, tonight um, will be the opposite, actually, sector of what I talked about last night. Uh, last night I talked about the, get, letting the war get into you, which is not a good thing. And um, if you didn't watch that one, you need to. And uh, I'll make it easy for you tonight. I'll, I'll mention a couple things about it. But the big deal with me is, is drawing boundaries. And uh, if, if I would have understood the boundaries of God before I went to heaven, uh, I would have done it a lot better because the, the Bible is really about boundaries, but the boundaries are positive. And I think that man, I, I, I know that man, I don't think, I know that man, um, well, just based on 10 commandments and it ended up being 613, you know, in the Jewish religion or 611, whatever you want to say. But, um, you know, man just gets involved with things and before you know it, you can't do anything. And if you do any something, you can't do it right, you know. And before you know it, you're everybody's, you know, in bondage and under a dictator. And um, we just, we just got to get back to why Jesus came and what he was saying while he was here, and what he would love for us to be saying right now. And the bottom line is, is yes, we are in a war. But boundaries need to be drawn before you go into a war. You can't just somehow figure it out when you get there. Um, and that's what I believe the body of Christ is doing only because we haven't been given the, the tools, but not all of us. Every, there are people all around the world that understand spiritual warfare. They understand uh, you know, what, what uh, spiritual assassins are because spiritual assassins are these momentum breakers. Literally, literally the momentum that has been gained uh, in the spirit by, for, I'll get that later, in the spirit, in the spirit, what has been gained by Jesus Christ is so powerful that the demons literally, you literally are fear this message right now. They, they literally do not want these kind of messages spoken. And if you notice it, even people that are not, um, you know, they're not, they're, they're not like Christian leaders, but they are leaders. If you notice that, that Christian, uh, Christian leaders are more cowardly about what they believe. And what I mean by that is they hold back, but you don't know that, you're, that they're holding back because you don't know it yourself. And so it's, it's a loss because uh, people that are under leaders, are, they, they don't usually excel. And if they start to excel like Jesus did, the, the Pharisees will take them out. So a lot of times in the world, you'll have a leader that's strong. But if you notice those people that are strong, they have boundaries. And if you notice that those people that, uh, that create the boundaries and say, listen, this isn't right, that, then um, those people gain a voice, but then they gain a following. And at a certain point, they determine, they, determine that that's, that person is getting too powerful because he has the voice of the people. So a, a true leader takes on the voice of the people, but the whole idea is to bring the people into power, not just individuals. So think about this, just because so, I want to I want to get this right in your head because I had to get it right. Is Jesus really, honestly, he he didn't come on his own, and he didn't even speak on his own. I mean, to quote him, he he literally was just doing something that the Father had assigned for him to do. So he was a servant. I don't speak on my own. The things that I'm doing right now, these are the works of my father. This isn't me. And he would correct people and say, listen, 
you know, these, these works that you see me doing, they're, they're my father's. If you see me, you've seen the father. Okay, so how could he say that? Because that's confusing when, when the disciples are already confused, that that makes them more confused. Well, what he was doing was he was wanting to, to transfer the authority and the power back to the believer. Those who believed in him, he gave them the authority. That word there is authority. It's not power like you think dunamis. It's the, word, word for, uh, the Greek word for authority. He gave them the authority to become sons of God. So he wasn't giving them like this dunamis power type thing, you know, like uh, we think about the Corinthian church, you know, being powerful. They were mere babes. They were carnal. You know, they, he said, I wish I could address you as spiritual. He said that in chapter 3. And then he mentioned all the spiritual gifts in 12, 13, and 14, because 13 is a spiritual gift chapter too. It's called love. And that's the greatest gift of all. Okay, but it was not, was not emphasized. So if you, if you notice that people, I can name them in history, but they would knock me off the, off the YouTube if I would say certain people or certain things. But if you notice that anybody that came and spoke for the people and was for the people um, and spoke like the Constitution, if they spoke that way, then those people, they disappear. So every time that happens, when people come and they speak truth, it doesn't, they don't have to be Christians. Because essentially, a human being was made to walk in authority. And you've got to remember that you're a human being, whether you're a saved human being or unsaved, or you, know, you, you don't have to, you, you have to realize that a human being is the, the highest order of creation. Okay, so you get that. All right, so being born again is taking care of the spiritual part, but you still have the physical and the mental part of it, which uh, the devil knows is, is up to us. So everybody follow me so far. So God took care of the spiritual part, but that's only a small portion of the world. And even when he, when he did what he did, he did it spiritually. So, which means that the rest of it is up to us to implement it by the Holy Spirit's help. Okay, so, the, but you've got a smaller portion. You can't say that the world is Christian or that you, you can't include the church stats of different denominations. You cannot say that, you know, because then what you're doing is, is that you, you have a large group of people that are a certain denomination, like Catholics then out of that group of Catholics is a large part of the world. One third of the world could be Catholic or, or considered Christian. But if you really like talk to each person, they're, they're not born again. So the spiritual part hasn't been taken care of. So it's all, it's all soul, it's all mental, it's all emotional. And you see this all the time. So, so the boundaries that Jesus drew, was that he came for the Father to re represent the Father, but he really was buying back humanity. Amen. He bought back humanity. But in the meantime, he walked as we should walk. He, he was an example. He, he wanted to be referred to as a son of man. The devils knew who he was, but he told them to shut up every time because he wanted to be known as a, a, the son of man and as a servant because he was doing the example part of it for us. So he couldn't do anything that we couldn't do because that was part of it. And this is not accepted by a lot of the church, what I just said. But it, everything he did, he did as, as God in the flesh because he was a God man. And he's got a human body. He's got a body seated on a throne. And he's still, he is a, a, a man and a God. He is the God. But he's a God man. He's got a body and he's seated on a throne. And he, he did that to buy us back. Okay, so those are boundaries that are already set. So we can't do anything without him. We can't, we have to do everything through him. We have to use his name but he gave us, because it says, John says in John chapter 1, it says, 
if th those who loved him and embraced him and embraced his teachings, he gave them the power to become sons of God. Authority. Okay? So he transferred it back to us. And he's, that's why he could say, we're going to do the same things he's doing and even greater things. Now, many people have come before us, have been kicked out of church for this very, very thing. Like by now, in some ages, I would have been taken out and killed right now over what I just said. And all I've done is quote scripture. You got to remember that they killed people for publishing the Bible. And now the same company that makes your Bibles also makes the satanic verses. But they make it a shell company that you got to do some digging to find it out. But, you know, it's all about the money. They'll publish anything. It's not Christian. So you, these companies that are Christian, they're not Christian. I'm, I'm saying this because you've got to start thinking this way, is that everybody that says they're a Christian is not a Christian. And, and, and everybody that, is a, that says they're a Christian, are they battle ready? Are they war ready? Are they ready for war? You know, have they been trained in warfare? Have they been trained to the point where they're, they're ready? They're ready and they've counted the costs for what it is to go to war. And it's taken this country being, being uh, you know, whittled down to the point where we're not, we're not really the world power anymore. We are if we push all the red buttons at the same time, but then there is no world. But you know, that's not war, that's pushing red buttons that, that cause countries to disappear. You know, and that's, that's, that's why nothing's, nothing happens. It's because everybody knows they're gonna all disappear. So people that have spoken for you and stood up for you, they, they're, they're taken out. So if you look at all the people that were involved in all the different, whatever you want to call them, revivals, moves of God, you know, if you, if you do that, and, you've, and I've exhausted the list, all of them got kicked out of church by the, by the denominations of the day. But they were almost ahead of their time. But they are so valid now. But that's the thing is, is that Jesus said this. I sent the prophets to you, he said to the Pharisees. He said, I sent you prophets and you killed them. And he said, you're going to kill me too. He said, you, now listen to this. He said, you celebrate them now, the ones you killed. You celebrate them as your heroes, <clears throat> but you killed them. So the boundaries, the boundaries that need to be drawn, they actually prevent you from allowing the war to get inside of you because you define the boundaries and you realize that you're, you have to be sent into something. You can't just go. You can't just hope that it works out. It's, it's, the liability is just too much. You have to process all these things because you, you're... You, your, your leadership in this generation has really ministered a lot to your soul, but not to your spirit. But see, you didn't know it until the disease of the week came. And they blame it on animals, you know, and it's, it's, it's the pig, it's the cow. You ever notice it's always from China? It's a China flu. Well, you know, just, I don't, whatever happened to an American flu? I got American cheese. But what about, do you, you know, why is it always coming from another country? And if you notice, it's, uh, you know, we, we define nations as being, you know, different levels, like third world, you know. And then we, we define um, them as pagan, you know. Well, what is pagan? You know, America is pagan. I mean, by the, by the definition of it, if you don't want to use that definition, then... Then, then, you know, you might get by as being in a pretty, pretty good status here. It's still, better, it's still better than anything I've encountered anywhere else. But so, so 
last night I, I, I talked about the momentum breakers and how they try to get the war inside of you because then you're compromised. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that whatever it was that was intended for you, the purity of it from the beginning, that pure, the pure, like, like um, when, when I was growing up, I mean, I had, the Whopper was so big yeah. that I felt, I mean, I felt like the, I felt like the car actually like went down when my dad would hand me the bag, you know? And I didn't count the fries in the box, but I mean, I'm sure there was more than what they give you now. And I don't even know if these fries are even from a potato, you know? So, I mean, I, they seem kind of tasteless, you know? It's just so strange that, that um, the pure, the pure, the pure slips away and it's not always obvious. But just remember, there are people who came to stand up for you in generations. God sent them to you, and they, they, they might have not been the perfect person that you thought, but they, they had a voice, and they spoke for the people. And, and, and those people were chosen in that generation to do that. But if God had a person that was a Christian, or what, well, however you wanted to classify that, he would use them. But sometimes... I've heard things out of people's mouth that they weren't Christian, but it was it was the right thing. Okay, so so um, getting into to what's on my heart tonight for this is that there there is a war going on around you in the in the other realm, and for the most part, if you think about when you are a kid and you watch cartoons and eat Captain Crunch growing up, I mean. You, you got a fight ahead of you. If you grew up watching cartoons and watched animals beat each other up, and then um, you have Captain Crunch, and you don't even know what's in it. And you, and you no, I'm not going to go there. But I mean, you know, you look at like what, what is totally unacceptable now that we, that we don't eat anymore. But then you look at what is available and you think it's healthy. Is it really healthy? You know, it, it, you know it, it, has it been relabeled? Okay, so you grow up and you're brainwashed about certain things, but you don't know it. And you're compromised, but you don't know it. So everything's fantasy. The animals, the cartoons, everything is, is fantasy. And you can sing all the songs. I could, I could never watch Disney movies or Disney cartoons. I could never watch all that stuff. I, there's something was wrong inside of me. But I, my parents were, you know, everybody was shoving it down my throat. All these things, you go, I didn't want to go to movies. You know, I didn't, I didn't smoke, I didn't drink or anything. I, didn't, I wasn't dating, but, you know, people want to go to a Foreigner concert or a Boston concert or all those ones back then, you know. And um, I didn't drink or smoke. or So I would go down there with them. I wasn't saved. Didn't smoke, didn't drink, but was as high as a kite by the time I got down there because the car... <laughs> So I was compromised in my, in my environment based on collateral damage, you know. <laughs> so I went to the concert, and I'm like, you know, okay, so I pay $45 at that time, which is, you know, 100 and some now. But I was listening to this music, and some of it's really good, but I'm thinking, you know, now I know why they got to get high to sit and listen to this stuff. Because <laughs> you can't. There's no way you can handle sit in front of these speakers and all this stuff. And I'm not talking about speakers like me speaking. I'm talking about these things on steroids where um, buttons are popping off your shirt. <laughs> and you're not fat. <laughs> they're popping off because they're shredding from, from sonic waves. <laughs> you're listening to songs like Carry On My Wayward Son. And it's like, what, what does that mean? 
And I'm thinking, okay, these people have to get high to handle this, and they paid all this money, and for what? Did you bring your lighter? I go, I don't smoke. <laughs> no, no, your lighter, because you have to light it. And certain, on, during the song, you know, everybody's on their light. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. You guys consider this entertainment. Now think about it. Now think about what we do. So then when you grow up and you have to go to college, then you have to actually study. All you've done is party. All you've been trained to do is eat your Captain Crunch and watch your cartoons. And then when you get old enough to go to college and, and you actually get in, And then that first week, you realize, man, I got to study all the time. This is how life is. Then you realize you're, you're behind. But you didn't have to be. But there was no leadership. There's nobody telling you, listen, if you, you got to start early. You got to start studying now. You got to like find out what's in your heart. And, and you, it, we just didn't have strong leadership. And everybody kind of did, you know. So, so what, what happened was I went away to college, but I literally had to break away from, from what I was dealing with on the East Coast because it was almost predominantly Italian and it was, it was almost predominantly Catholic. And I, I mean, there were only a few Protestants. And I was a minority with being what they call, they called me a wasp, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. I was a wasp. They made me as mad as a hornet, but I was a wasp. You know? <laughs> but I was a minority because I wasn't Catholic and I wasn't Italian and I wasn't. So it, there you just stayed with your family. So you, everything you did was with your family. So I, I never really met anybody else until I got to high school and started hanging out with other people. And I found out there was other people on the earth <laughs> besides people that had my last name. It's the most bizarre thing. And the whole thing was is that wherever your dad worked is where your grandfather worked. And your dad worked where your grandfather worked, and they knew you. And so when you were 16 or 17, you went to work where your dad works. And then you, he retired, and you took over. And so when I left, when I got saved, what I felt was something was always working against me to keep me in a small place. But I wasn't really smart enough because I ate Captain Crunch all the time. I wasn't able to process the boundaries that God had redefined for my life. Once he put those in there by the Holy Spirit and I started reading the Word of God, things started solidifying that were there. And the boundaries started to come forth. But it wasn't from leadership. It wasn't from church leadership. It wasn't from my parents. I'm just being honest with you. And my, my dad's in heaven, he would want me to preach this message. My mom's at home, she would want me to preach this. So the Holy Spirit started to bring out. But what the Holy Spirit is bringing out of you is going to really, really irritate the environment you're in right now. If it doesn't, there's really, really, you need to lip it up and get... And, and get with it. If you, if you feel comfortable right now, there's something wrong. So as your, as your temperature rises in the spirit and as you, your boundaries are defined by the Holy Spirit, by the word of God being that, that, that catalyst for the Holy Spirit to attach to into your life, those boundaries start. What happens is, is you start to live and move and walk in the spirit and you start to run into people that weren't in your way, but now they are. All of a sudden, you want to crawl out of your skin and nothing happened except you got born again and, and God started to bring forth the boundaries in your life. And as you got established and you started walking, 
it was better. You'll, if, you were, if you were to talk to me earlier in your life, I would have said, come out and be separate. Come out from among them and be ye separate. I would have told you that. But people were not saying that because the leadership in the churches wanted to bring in and get a big church, big offerings, and so they, they compromised the message in order to bring more people in. Amen. But then yet you have people sitting in the crowd that have not repented, but you put them on the board, you put them in leadership, they teach Sunday school, and they, they don't have the proper boundaries, and they, they're not going to teach the proper boundaries. And then this, this starts the process, and that's how things have changed, the, even our country, what I've just said. So if the Spirit was to have His way, and he identifies as a male. If, if he has his way, what he is going to do, according to Jesus, if you want to bring him into it, into your doctrine, he said that when the Spirit comes, he's one like me who's going to be a friend just like I am to you. He's going to lead you in all truth, but it says that he is not going to speak on his own. He is going to only speak what the Father tells him to speak. So he goes through the whole thing again of how Jesus w was sent and was presenting the Father, not himself. There's a reason why this is all being said this way. It all has to do with authority. It all has to do with framing our mind correctly about that whatever we do, whatever we say, it has to be from the other realm from, from our Father. The Holy Spirit has to have His way. If He's going to have His way, He's going to speak what the Father's saying. Okay, what the Father is saying is beyond your comprehension right now. And that's how I can tell. Not only can I tell by the condition of the body of Christ, which is supposed to be built up by the fivefold, according to Paul, if you want to bring him into it in chapter 4 of Ephesians, you have the fivefold building up the body in the maturity and unity, which is the top two lacking things in the body right now. Okay, so it, nobody wants to be honest because no, everybody wants to be friends with everybody. So you have to have someone in each generation sometimes that's just snatched out of the I don't care and placed in front of you. The I don't care genetics. I don't care what you say or think. I was sent. And I have to speak this, and it, it doesn't matter if I get a response or not. I have to speak this because the Father is saying it. And then I just walk away. You know, I, and, and people like this, they end up on a cross. They end up dead, okay? Why? Because when you start speaking what God's saying from the other realm, the evil spirits that you didn't know where they were, they're going to come forth. Everything is going to start to be clear. People are going to start acting up. They're not going to be able to tell the truth. They're not going to be able to act right. The, the, the temperature is going to increase to where the spirits cannot stay silent anymore. And so I remember when on the week before Austin, which was just a, a couple weeks ago, I saw billowing flames in the heavenlies all over the earth. And the, the Lord showed me that the heavens are on fire right now and that this will start to manifest. And he said, it's not interpretable right now. He said, but watch and see if anyone else sees it. And no one else said anything. And that bothered me. But he said, once they do catch that that's going on right now, they're going to want to interpret it. And so they'll get on Sid Roth, you know, and they'll, they'll talk about you know, what that means. But he said it's not interpretable yet, which is another test. So the first test was how many people really discern what's going on in the heavenlies right now, because it's on fire. I mean, billowing fire. Okay, then out of that, the people that do see it, are they going to interpret it when they're not supposed to? That's the second test, is saying stuff that is not being said about it, okay? So then the third one is, is when it actually comes into this realm and it starts to manifest. However, the reason you can't interpret it is because it's going to cause manifestations that are based on where the body of Christ is versus the world. If the world and the body of Christ are not separate, 
then you're going to have a confusing, conflicting view of what's going on in people's lives. Because God is not mocked. A man is going to reap what he sows. Which means that whatever you have put in your field is going to come up. And you can't say, I don't know where that came from. You can't mock God. In other words, you can't say, I gave and I never got. Well, is that the, really what the, the gospel is? I mean, it, it, you know, it's a parable of so money. Because it's not. So if you're basing your receiving on your giving based on a scripture that's talking about the word of God, which is a whole bunch of things, not just one thing, then there's going to be a, a, a conflict going on because people are going to say, well, I believe for my healing and I didn't get healed. I believe for finances, I didn't get my finances. You know, and you can go on and on and on. I prayed and I didn't get any answer to prayer. But see, if you meet Jesus and you say, I believed God, I believed, and you didn't answer me, he's going to shake his head. He goes, no. He goes, if you pray in my name, my father will give you what you ask. Yeah, but I, I addressed the devil and he didn't leave. He goes, my name is enough. My blood is enough. He's going to, that's what he, he'll say. That's what he'll say. He hung on a cross. He was beaten for your healing not just your sin. So immediately when you meet Jesus in his presence, it's the fastest ping pong game you've ever encountered because whatever you say, it's going to come right back at you because he has done everything he's going to do for this age right now. He's seated. He's not going to do another thing about the war because he's already made a show of him openly. He's triumphed over the devil through the cross, but he's, he's, it says that, John says he's destroyed the works of the devil. He destroyed them, which means his, his, his seated position means that now he's waiting, and it says now he's waiting for his enemies to be brought to him and become his footstool through the church. So he's, he's waiting because that's what they used to do when they would conquer kingdoms. They would bring the king from that kingdom. And the king that conquered would put his, his heel, his foot, on top of his head. And the train that filled his t the temple was all the trains of all the different robes of all the kings tied together. And the longer your train was, was how many kingdoms you had defeated. So you can imagine if God's train fills the temple, he must be the king of all. Yeah. Right? Right? Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. You all are so nice. I'm trying to be serious here, you know. <laughs> all right. So there's, there's, some, there's some scriptures I want to go over to help you. But just remember that they have infiltrated you in, in, in your diet. They've infiltrated you in your education or lack thereof. And then when you turn to the church, which should be the most powerful entity on the earth, the most powerful uh, uh, agency, which should be the church, um, we're depending upon governments for subsidies and food and, you know, all this, when really the church should be prospering. So what happens is the warfare kind of washes people out. And so now what we have is we have, you know, we, we started with Gideon's um, our army, which was all the people that came to qualify. And he whittled it down from like 34,000 down to 300 because of one trait. They were watchful. They were, they were, they were, they were sober-minded, like Titus 2.6 says. So they, when they went to drink water, they looked both ways to give them that two or three seconds to grab that water where they wouldn't be able to look for the enemy to come upon them. It was, they were guarding that point of vulnerability. Does anybody understand what I just said? So they, they what Gideon was told by God to select the, the forces that would be with him. It went from the 34,000 or whatever it is, if you add it all up, down to 300 because of the individuals that were mindful that when they went down for water, that they would be vulnerable for a couple seconds 
And so that trait of looking both ways to see if there was anything visible. I mean, if you watch the animals, they do that. Uh, you know, if you watch the lions go down to drink, they look both ways. And some of them don't see the alligator that's under, but that's another thing. But <laughs> don't watch those videos. Those are bad. So a anyway, the, 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 trait, the trait for the body of Christ is being watchful. And being ready at any moment, whether it be in word or deed. In other words, anything that would happen, you, you've got food, you've got a word, you've got uh, extra love. You've got the ability to minister to somebody in a time to make up the gap. These are the 300, but this is the narrow way. This is the remnant, this, this is what it ends up being, is 300. But you gotta remember, you got a whole nation and only 400 showed up in the cave of Adullam to form David's government, 400. That his special forces, he had 30 fighting men that he had trained, you know, but he had a whole nation. And all those people and all the people that are eligible for the the army or, you know, to protect that nation. But you see this in the Bible and you see the 12, you see the 70, you see the 120. The multiplication really started to happen after Jesus left. And you got to remember that, yes, the 12 did because they were there. But how about the 70 when Jesus didn't go out with them and he hadn't died on the cross yet. He just said, go out and heal the sick and cast out devils. He hadn't done he hadn't done the cross yet. Why did the devils listen to them? Because he sent them in his authority. So preemptively before the cross, you were able to do what you do after the cross. You think it's the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus, you know, that those devils listen to you. That's true. But what about the 70? The 12 were sent. The 70 were sent out. So the Holy Spirit is sent, but he only speaks what the Father's saying. So I would suggest that that's what, how, how I would preach. I mean, if you're going to preach, if you're going to minister, I would like want to know what the Spirit of God is saying. And I've got to be this bold because no one else will be. I'm just... I'm really tired of, of seeing the same cycle being repeated, and now it's happening again. Now everybody thinks that we're out of it. But it's already, it's already uh, being set up for the next disease. It's already being set up for the next failure. It's already been set up. Everything is already, because it's, it's Python. It's a, it's a, it's a constrictor. It, it, it waits for you to exhale, and then it squeezes tighter so that you can't bring any, eventually you cannot take any air in because it's a constrictor, that's a python. The only way, the only way to take care of this is, is you have to be sent and you have to be under authority, and it has to be the body of Christ. It can't be individuals. So Derek Prince can't help you. And that's, that is not like, that is not what I'm saying, what you just thought. Because I'm not, I'm not, I listen to him all the time. The devils hate him. That's why I listen to him. <laughs> Lester Summerall, the devils hate Lester Summerall. So I, I you know, that's my first sign. If the devils like you, you know, then why should I like you? You know, because there's no way of improvement. Okay, all right, so... The, the condition that we're in is because the people that were somehow placed over us in, in every area, they, they either stopped leading or they were compromised in some way. Whatever happened, happened. But I believe the war got into them. And I believe that, that we have been lulled to sleep, but there's a solution to all this, is that we just got to get back to simplicity and, and, um, and look at God as we used to when we go to Sunday school 
and the adults would go to the big class, you know, and you would go to the little class, and you would color and talk about Noah's Ark. And, and, um, but at least I learned the Bible, and I learned it as a child. So growing up, what I brought into Christianity, when I repented, the only thing that really counted was what I understood as a child, not in my adult years, because that was being, I was being trained to operate in the soul. And it was, I was literally, I feared man. I feared uh, everything. I was, brought, I was conditioned to fear. So, for instance, Jesus said on the cross, he said, he said, telestai, which is the word that was on the stamp of the Roman soldiers when you paid your taxes. You st they stamped and said paid in full. So how did it get it is finished? Because paid in full is a lot power, more powerful. You, know, you can do this with a whole Bible. It's really embarrassing that we have 200 translations. We've got to study them all just to find out what God really said. Why do we have to have so many translations? Why do we have to have a, so many different types of denominations to interpret Jesus and God? This is the compromise where we live in. Okay, so the boundaries are from heaven is my point. And they're established by God sitting on a throne, which is talked about constantly. So you have Psalms 89, you got the, the throne and all the layers on the throne that are in there, righteousness and justice and truth, faithfulness, all these, these things that God, he's seated on these, the throne that has these layers of his, of his character. And he speaks forth. And when he speaks forth, it says in Isaiah 55 that it goes forth and comes back around and accomplishes that which he intended. Not just what he said, but what he intended. Okay, so there's some adjustments that need to be made. You should have come out from among them and, and been separate. Okay, so we've established that. And it's time to do that now. You also have to realize that before you were born, God was already fine. So he wasn't waiting for you to be born so that he could get help. He, he planned you to be on the earth so that his will could be known on the earth instead of just in heaven. Every generation has really, honestly, if you look at the excellence of God's intention, it, it, the, every generation has failed because if you look at what Paul did in his generation, which was just about 30 years uh, after Jesus was here, he was working and going to jail and out of jail and in jail and out of jail and writing his books and his letters. And, and his, the influence that he had was so powerful that the church grew uh, weekly. But it was so strong, the growth and, and the message was so strong that the devils were having Christians killed so that the message couldn't be spoken. Because it was growing so fast that it got to where they had to throw people in jail and silence them. Okay, so now 2,000 years later, we are not even at the level that Paul preached. 2,000 years later, we should be, have at least fought the good fight to where we have maintained. But now, now it's going to be whittled down to us. It's going to be those who say, listen, I want to go back, and I want to go back to being a child and I want to understand God from a child's point of view, and that is he's a good father, and that he sent Jesus to go around doing good, because God's good, and, and, and healing everyone that was oppressed of the devil. 
Okay, so there is no reason for any devil to be allowed to stay. There's, there's, literally, the devils should fear you. And the bottom line is this, is because we have not come out and been separate, and it's something that we need to do, not only in our heart, but we need to do it in our mind, and we need to do it physically. And the power is not in the dunamis, it's in the exosia, which is authority. It's not based on how I feel. It's not based on if I walked here, flew here, or rode a bike. It's not based on how much money I have. Or it, it's not based on any of those things. It's just like healing. It's not, you could be sick and somebody could get healed by your prayer because it's not you doing the healing. You're doing the praying, right? But see, you have to separate, like what you just did, you agree with that. But you, you can pray for somebody to be forgiven of their sins and be in sin. You could pray for somebody's finances and miss your bills the next week. And they're like calling you like, hey, thanks for praying. I am loaded, man. I got four, env I got four envelopes. Okay, because this is why we do. We, we think, okay, we think that we're involved with this based on our status. Why? Because we've been brainwashing and thinking that. The solution comes from heaven. If you give a solution to something and you implement it, that you're a carrier of that glory from heaven into a situation. But you could be suffering for that or lacking in the same area and seeing results. So why, why do devils listen to you? The, 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 the disciples, the, the 70, they were like, man, the devils actually listen to us. You know, they couldn't believe it. And Jesus said, don't rejoice in that. Rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Well, what was he saying? What was he saying? He was trying to tell them why the devils were listening to them. They were focused on the fact that they were listening, just like they were sending their moms. These are grown men sending their moms to talk to Jesus about the seating arrangement in the Lamb's Book of uh, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the wedding supper of the Lamb. Grown men saying, Mom, can you talk to Jesus? I'm serious. You're laughing, but that's what they were doing. It's, it's embarrassing. They weren't getting this. So Jesus was correcting them because they thought it was them. But I guarantee you, I guarantee you that 85% of you tonight could be healed completely. Once you realized that sickness can't live in your body, it, it can't. Because you'll find that it's more about your understanding in the mental realm that's blocking your spi the spirit. And that your mind is keeping you from doing things or participating in things that you're supposed to be participating in because you, you haven't done these things. You haven't separated yourselves and then you haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to establish boundaries in your heart to where they come out into your soul. And you start, you start to live what's happening inside of you, which is the kingdom. The kingdom is expanding from within. See, the people were waiting for Jesus to set himself up as the king of Israel. And when he didn't do that on the, the, uh, you know, on the you know, Palm Sunday, then they, threw, they went to throw him over the hill the next, the Monday morning afterwards. Tomorrow morning, you know, they throw him off. Why? Because he didn't go to the center of the city and set himself up in the temple as king. And that's when Judas was lost right there. And a lot of the disciples were disheartened because they had, they had they misunderstood what was really going on because they didn't yield to what God, Jesus was saying to them and the Spirit wasn't allowed to interpret 
Okay, so the cleansing that's going on in the atmosphere right now is going to manifest differently on what it touches. It's going to have a response, but it's not going to be predictable because it's, it's a cleansing fire, but it's a separating fire too. So the fire causes only the, the, that, those things that can survive it to come forth, which according to scripture, the things that are burned up are wood, hay, and stubble, Anything that is, 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 uh, the, anything that is perishable will perish in the fire. Yeah. But what comes forth is, is the pure gold, the pure metals, right? Okay, so that's why you're, so Paul said, judge yourself lest you be judged. That's why we're supposed to produce fruit in keeping with our repentance, but we're supposed to build on the rock, not the sand. All these parables are coming into your mind now. This is actually the spiritual warfare I mean, these things, some people have to fast. Some people have to do prayer or do these things. Uh, but the, I'm just being honest with you because no one else will tell you, but nobody, the devils are not afraid of your tambourine or your flag <laughs> or your musical instrument. They're not even afraid of your Bible. What they're afraid of is if you pick that up and actually start saying the Bible, or when you flag, or when you play the tambourine, or when you dance, it's in the spirit. And the spirit's doing it. It becomes an expression of what God is saying. Then, then all of a sudden, um, there's confrontation. Okay? So if you notice, there's not a lot of confrontation in the, in the flesh or in the soul. There, it, there's confrontation, but it's not resol it doesn't resolve anything. Because what happens when stuff happens in the spirit, like the word comes forth, or, uh, you know, thing God's, God manifests in certain ways, and it's indisputable, well, then the, the arguments, you know, what are you going to say? A person, you know, we just had it happen just, I think, last week. You know, back when... It was me and Kathy and FedEx, me on the piano, her at the back table. Piano, preach, book table, pack, Southwest Airlines, two hour flight takes eight hours, peanuts. But there were individuals that come over and actually help us make our study guides. And this one of these people uh, d developed tumors, cancer. And we, you know, I, I'm not like, I'm not the kind of person I'm going to come up and pat you on back and say, I'm praying for you. I'm just going to do it and not say a word. I'm going to beat the living daylights out of the devil, just like you are. And I really don't care if a book comes out about it, about it or if Sid calls me or not. Do you understand? Is, is that after a while, a soldier doesn't really care. A soldier just gets it done. Well, they, she went back, and they can't find the tumors. But what, what it is, is is that there's no argument. You just got two x-rays, two sets of x-rays. So what are you going to do? Well, they can't, it's hard because mi misdiagnosis is one thing, but you know, when you got, so in other words, what do they have to say? They either have to say, well, it, I made a mistake or God healed them. And they don't want to say either one. All right. So the, 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 the lines have been drawn and the warfare is fierce because the lines have been drawn. The only thing is, is that if you do not walk within those boundaries, you're no threat. Amen. No, you know, uh, people, people have to start talking like this in order to move people in to the love of God because love, God's love language, you know, yours might be food, but God's love language is obedience. So Jesus said, you show me you love me by, by, uh, by obeying me. 
James said, you show me what you believe by what you do, not what you say. So why was there such an emphasis on confession? Because it was based on another scripture about speaking to mountains. But it, it also says in 25, you know, if you go to the 25th verse, it talks about unforgiveness. And it says it's, none of this will work. It's the disclaimer. So when you call and, and want to return, you're, you want to return because it doesn't work. You have to read the fine print, which happens to be verse 25 and 26, you know. You're Mark 11, 23 and 24, you know. But the fine print is 25 and 26, and it does not work if you have unforgiveness. So it says if you have that, just, just stop, stop talking to the mountain, set everything down, and go take care of this, then come back. That's the boundaries that were set by Jesus. It's in red, okay? So why, why would we just concentrate on one thing when there's all these other things? Because we are being deceived. There's a whole table that has been set by the Lord that has everything we need on it. Everything we need for life and godliness has been given to us through these promises that we can be partakers of the divine nature. So I'm just not going to um, call for the potatoes to be passed. I'm going I'm to eat everything that is there on the table because I could, I could get all my prosperity scriptures and be doing well and die of some disease because I didn't eat healing, that, which was right there in that bowl on the same table. And, and the thing it is, is if you are, if you aren't able, if you're a call to be a leader and you're, you have faith and yet you can't get your vision into someone else, you're not really a leader because you're, you're on your own. You're a single pilot. You're just going to be, you're, you're going to be stuck with yourself. A leader has to transfer it to the others to, to come together to do it. God did that through Jesus Christ, but he did that through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit now is doing that through the church. And we are supposed to be at a certain level right now that when you start singing, you should, you should be able to hear devils screaming. When, when you start, when you wake up, you should hear devils screaming that you just woke up. These things are happening in the spirit. This is the war that's going on. The war that's going on is you showed up and you were sent. And the reason why the devils listen to you is because your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's, it's done. Now think about Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6 is based on the fact that we're defending something, which means we already have it. We're not obtaining something. We already have it. The armor is defensive. There's only one that is offensive, and that's the sword of the Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. It's both. It's a two-edged sword able to, to, to cut and to divide between soul and spirit. That, that, that Word of God is the sword of the Spirit, but it's the only offensive weapon. The rest of them are for you to defend what you already have. Well, I'm done. Let's go to Chick-fil-A. Because that's the truth. No, that's the truth. We're all, the, 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 the boundaries have been defined. We're trying to obtain something that's already ours. Why are, why are we going after the devil? Trust me, if you're walking with God, he's, he's, he's going to present himself, and he's going to hope that you back off. But you have it. He doesn't. You're defending the faith. Okay, are you defending what has already been given to you, or are you still trying to obtain it? Now, see, if, if everyone, if one person, if a flight attendant and a hairdresser would have preached this in every generation, it would have only taken a couple generations. We wouldn't even be in the situation we're in. We would have already accomplished the end of the church age. Now, listen to me. Everybody listen to me. The, we are out of God's will. God's will is the, thy kingdom come and thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. That's his will. Um, you don't need to miss a meal. Go eat twice for dinner. You don't even need it. You can eat twice. 
You don't have to fast to find this out. You don't have to find out that you're supposed to be separate from the world, okay? All of you know this. It's those that are going to watch this for 30 years from now that need to hear this because that's the honest truth. Everybody in every generation, every time a silly president got uh, you know, elected, they thought it was the end and the white horse is coming back. Every generation has gone through this. Does anybody read history? It is much worse at other times than this. Much worse. And God keeps, by his grace, keeps us in, in this mode of where we can do something. He gives us the grace to do something about it in each generation. But everybody does nothing because if you talk to every person, they were waiting on God. And it was the end. They were just waiting for him to come. Now read what was written in 65 AD, the first and second Thessalonians. They thought Jesus was coming back in their lifetime, so they had quit their jobs. And Paul had to tell them, that's where you get, if you don't work, you don't eat. He was telling them, go back to work. Jesus is not coming back until these things happen first. And he lays it all out. The son of perdition cannot be revealed because he who's holding them back is in place still, which is us. So we're, we're here. And because of that, the Antichrist can't be seated. So it's just, it, it's just a show. It's a carnival. Smith Wigglesworth. I mean, Lester Summerall taught our, cl our classes that I was in. It wasn't video. It was him. He would show up and Kenneth Hagin would sit down and, and all these John Osteen, all these people would come in and preach and teach. And that was the faith class. I was just so blessed to have all these men and women. They would come. And, and Lester Summerall said, I lived with Smith Wigglesworth. And he told me, he said, it's time for you to go back to the United States because you're not a citizen here. He said, the Nazis are coming. And you cannot be here. And he prophesied about the fact that at the end of Lester Summerall's life, he would see the beginning of the move of God and that Smith Wigglesworth would not see it. But he said, you, at your very end, which he just passed away a few years ago, uh, Lester Summerall, it would be the greatest move of God would come upon the earth. And he said, you will see the very tip of it. Okay, so in everybody's mind, what happened in World War II was the end of the world. But America came out of nowhere and stopped it very quickly. Okay? So what Satan is doing is he's taking that out now, America, so that he can do the next world war. He's, he's diminishing us. Come on now. You're all looking at me like you never thought. America stopped it. God used America to stop it. It's not God's will that this happened. So all of us are sitting and waiting for something that God has already instituted that we are supposed to be on the earth, not just do. We're to be the blockade. According to Thessalonians, we're the blockade. So he will go unseated. But every generation does nothing because Jesus is coming back. So, I mean, everybody runs up their credit card. Because Jesus is coming back. And you all eat macaroni and cheese and put bacos on it. Why? Because Jesus is coming back. You, you, don't, you don't write the book you're supposed to write. You don't write the songs you're supposed to write. You don't design the flags, the tambourines. You don't, you don't, you don't pick up the accordion. You don't do anything. I'm just kind of joking because I don't know about the accordion myself. You know, But... Don't things because in your mind it's not going to count. But that's a lie. 
because you do count and everything you do that is inside of you is for this generation it's not for the next life so what happens is a few people it defaults to it defaults the boundaries that were in 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 the generation it defaults to people that are willing to do it they end up being superheroes but they're not superheroes it's just they answer their phone when God calls. It defaults to them. They become what you would call your superheroes. They become generals of the faith, you know. But what it was, was they were just crazy enough to say yes. Crazy enough to be available. But these people almost die because the devil almost takes them out. They end up having a healing ministry based on the fact that Satan tried to take them out as a kid with diseases and things. If you check out everybody that was in the healing movement, the devil tried to take them out. And, and my thing is, is what I saw when I was in heaven was, is that people wait until those kind of things happen to have a testimony, and then they get in gear, and they become these superheroes in a generation. But, you know, it wasn't God's will that Paul actually, you know, got knocked to the ground and blinded it would have been better if he just would have uh, prayed and submitted. But he was blind. He was blinded, and we, he had a traumatic, but you don't have to have that traumatic event. You don't have to almost die to experience God in your calling. All of you are so important, and everything that is in you must come out and be made manifest in this life in this age. And that's why I say, you know, if you don't believe in prosperity, believe for it for others then, if you don't believe it for yourself. You know, if, you know in other words, somebody's going to have to pay your bills if you don't pay them. And, and what about what you're supposed to be doing for others? If you don't do that, someone else is going to have to pick up the slack. So it's not really right to, to say, well, I don't believe in this, or I don't believe in healing, or I don't believe in tongues, or I don't believe in the... Uh, uh, the demons need to be cast out. They're, you know, the, you know the, the bottom line is, is you're a dull sword. You're, you need to be sharp. Amen. You need somebody to come into your life and teach you to be sharp again. I would suggest the Holy Spirit be that first person. The Holy Spirit can do this. He can sharpen you and make you really sharp in the Spirit. But he's got to have your full cooperation, which means you've got to be fully convinced. Okay, so getting into, that was my introduction, which, all right, we got, what? All right. The one thing, the one thing that I know is happening right now is isolation. Satan is wanting to isolate people. Okay through rejection, through competition, through jealousy, through all kinds of different um, works of the flesh, people are feeling like they, they are uh, isolated. This is, this is not God's will. These are evil spirits. Okay, so it says in, in 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, Be alert, be sober in your mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around. He says it's your enemy, and he's prowling around, and he's a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. It doesn't say he's toothless. And this is what's so weird is I, I heard that in the Word of Faith movement. He's just a toothless lion, and they got, they got like teeth marks on him. Like, well, where would you get all those bites? Oh, yeah, the devil, man, he just, you know, I'm like, oh, okay. It doesn't, it doesn't add up. And what's happening is, is people are disheartened because they, they think they don't have faith. The reason the devil comes at, after you is because you have faith. <laughs> He's, you know, you're a threat. He's trying to retrieve the seed that was sown in your heart. I mean, according to the parable, if you want to bring Jesus into it, Jesus said it immediately after the word is received, the thief comes to steal it, the birds. Okay? All right. So you, the first thing that you have to resolve is, is that, that Satan desires 
to, to uh, take you out. I mean, he told that to Peter. Jesus told Peter, Satan desires to have you. But I pray for you that your faith faileth not. Well, that's, that's why I know that Judas was not the target. Judas was second on the list. Peter was first on the list. Jesus prayed for Peter. He did not. It doesn't say that he prayed for Judas. I believe that, that Satan was after Peter and didn't get him. That your faith faileth not. Come on now, you're all thinking. You need some, need some WD-40 in your brain right now. You're like, <laughs> all right. James 1.13 says, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Okay, here's the second thing. The second falsehood, besides thinking that the devil is, doesn't have teeth and isn't after you, is because this is, not, this, is not, this is not the way you go to war, is thinking that the enemy is powerless. Because every soldier I've ever talked to, they were dumped out of an airplane, and he said, they, they told me, they said the shock was when, when bullets were coming over their head and they realized that someone's trying to kill them. And all of a sudden they said, I didn't want to be in a war anymore. I wanted to be a soldier up until I was, I was hiding and, and, and dodging bullets. And then all of a sudden, the reality of war sets in. And now it's, you're going to have to be on your game and your training in order to survive. And that's what's happening to a lot of people. They're not, they're not, their mind is not framed. It's a fantasy world. These demons, they need to be reprimanded they need to be spoken to they need to they need you to stomp your foot and know that that what that means is that you're done you're done with them you got to be done with them okay so this is what the scripture says it says that god does not tempt this is not god doing this in other words attributing things that are from satan as acts of god This is number two. I'm just going to do some basic boundaries here. They should have got this in Sunday school. We would have all turned out better. Come on now. First chapter of Job. It's still in the Bible, I checked. Satan was given permission to touch Job, which is a big controversy. We're not going to teach on that tonight. Because <laughs> I don't have enough sugar in my system. You know. <laughs> But what I'm going to tell you is, is that as soon as Satan was allowed to touch Job, you got to look at the four things that Satan did to Job to determine warfare. Not only that, to determine the origin. So he used the weather. He used the enemies that surrounded him. Names the tribes. He used disease, the disease of the weak, the Greek alphabet. He, he also used Job's wife, which is not a doctrine. I'm just saying, you know, that he, he chose to come in to the, whatever was the weakest link in his life. So he took out his children, took, took his wife out, really. So just curse God and die. And please don't write me, because every time I say this, women write me and they say, you don't know what she was going through. I'm like, I'm serious. <laughs> I'm serious. You want to see them? I take photos. I take snapshots of this stuff. Do you realize how hard it was for her? <laughs> I go, that's not the point. <laughs> that's the way people deal with things. Okay, so curse God and die. That's, thank you for that. Was that a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom? Or, you know, like, see, that's what the body of Christ needs right now from the fivefold. Is they need spoken to and built up. They don't need, they don't need people saying, you know, if you don't repent, you're, you're going to hell. Or your, your, your nation's going to be burning. Or, you know, these prophets that are prophesying all this stuff. 
Jesus said, produce fruit in keeping with your repentance. So if, if the body of Christ repents, then the next thing should be the encouragement to produce fruit. Which is not yelling at you. Do you get it? Okay, so the, the, the four things that you see Satan do, tornadoes and weather and, and the enemy being risen up, the Sabaeans and all the, the, the tribes that are around them, and um, the disease, and, and the, the, the children were killed through the, the tornadoes. And um, then the very last one is, is Satan was able to, to get in to Job's wife or it could have been the other way around. It just so happened that it was this way. So it's not that he, it's down on women. But the very fact that what is the weakest link in your life? Because Satan is going to come after that. Do you understand? I know this is, you're not going to, you know, this is not like popcorn type thing, you know, and this isn't like a cell. But these, these are the things that cause you tomorrow to beat the living daylights out of the devil that's bothering you. Okay? So you got to identify your enemy. you got to identify the fact that God is a good God and that he is not working against you. He didn't make people sick and then send Jesus to heal them. Jesus only did the will of the Father. Well, if it was God's will for some people to be sick, then, then he would have been making people sick, and he would say, you know what, it's God's will that you, that you have this. But he never said that. He went around doing good and healing everyone that was oppressed to the devil, which means that his will was to do good and heal everyone that was oppressed to the devil. So it tells you the origin of why it came, who did it, and, and who God is and who the devil is and, and God's purpose. And so we are to pick that up as well. And we're to do that, which means that you're going to be the 300. You're going to stand up and you're going to say, well, I'm going to stand for me and my house. We're going to we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to we're God's a good God. And um, I'm going to preach the good news of the gospel. Right. All right, so you can't, when you're tempted, you can't say God's doing it. When something's happening, you don't, you know, why do you think that all of Job's friends, that was the fivefold? It shouldn't be, but I'm telling you, you have no idea what's going to happen when you get to heaven, because you're going to see all this, and, and, and you'll hear God say, who's dark in my counsel? Because God had nothing to do with those things that happened to Job. God was... Have you considered? He picked a fight. God had confidence in Job. I think that's what we're supposed to get. I don't think you need a Hebrew class to get that. I mean... <laughs> yeah. All right. For the flesh sets its desire. This is in Galatians 5.17... The flesh sets its desire against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. So here is how Satan can get Satan gets in, because James says that it's your own desires, evil desires, that you're drawn away. He's talking to the church. He's actually talking to Christians in his congregation. He had a big church in, um, in Jerusalem. I don't even know if he had a coffee shop and healing rooms, but he did. You know, he had at least one of these buildings here, you know. But think about it. James, James was, was really, really a strong person. He was really strong in doctrine, but... He wouldn't have been invited to most churches today because they would have had to come forth and be honest, which means it's rubber meets a road. And, and people don't want that, but that's what we're in. Okay, so um, the 
1 Corinthians 10.13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure under it. And I always think of this. Like every building I'm in, like, like this building, everywhere where I've gone today, I know where my exits are. When I sit down, I'm always face facing my exit. I'm always facing the entrance so that I can see who's coming in, who's going out all, all the time. I'm trained like that because I didn't always used to be just this. So I know exactly if there's an active shooter, I know exactly how, how, how they're going to come in. I know where I'm going and where, which one I'm leaving out of. And it, it, if I'm armed, then I'm going to stay. But if I'm not, I'm going to go. No, no, no use being there. I'm going to watch it on TV later. <laughs> now, see, you wouldn't even know that. But that's the way I think about everything. I'm thinking way ahead of time about everything. Why? Because I have a brain. And I also know that the enemy is not sleeping. When you're sleeping, he's not. And he's waiting. And so this, this way of escape is provided for you in every single situation. There's always a way out of everything that you go through. So when something happens that's not normal, I automatically look for the E-X-I-T. I look for the exit sign. I, I know it's there because it's not too late. It's not, it's not, it's not unresolvable. There's a way out. That's the way I think about it right now. Like, like, I know the key to this life. The key to this life is actually doing something. Because no one else has ever done anything, really. I mean, they have, but you know what I'm saying. I'm not here to sustain what has been previously done. I, I want patents under my name. I want, I want uh, history. I want books written. I want people that were... We're not going to live past a certain age, but because I obeyed God, they lived a long, full life. That people were, heard the word of God and, and were able to accomplish many more things than they would have if they had not heard the word of God. And that, that devils left because I was sent to a city, didn't say a word, just showed up. And, the, and it fooled, the, it messed the devil up for years. This is, this is, this is the supernatural realm. Okay, so in the spirit right now, you have adversaries. And just like that billowing flame in the heavenlies right now, you don't know how they're going to come at you. They, you don't know what they, they want to do. They might not know. But they are adversaries. They look to see who's weak. They want response. They want to have some sort of, of a manifestation in your life that they can report back that they were successful. This is how they are. They, they work on commission. And they want to be able to produce a result somehow. So if you do not allow the war to get into you and you have allowed God to draw the boundaries of the war and then you allow God to send you, then what you do is you, you, you literally mess up the plans of the enemy. You stop what the enemy was going to do because they can't stop you if you've been sent. And they can't seat... They can't seat the Antichrist if you're still here. It becomes an impasse. And this is what happens. If you do not respond, they go on to find someone weaker. They will not mess with you past a certain point because you do not respond. Now, this is what I know. I know this. 
I know that the devil is waiting to see if you respond. They don't know what you're thinking. They have to make you predictable. They have to place thoughts and feelings and try to route you in a certain direction so that they can see what your buttons are that they need to push. Once they get those buttons down, then they spread those buttons, those, those are labeled with a label maker, and you are labeled now. And, and drive-by devils, I call them, they will strategically come at you, and they will try to convince you of something that's not even true based on your response. So, if you get hit tonight in any way, and you, you say, okay, and you reach into your glove compartment, and it's not your sidearm, it's tracks, it's food, it's money. And you say, okay, you know what? I'm going to stand out in the street. I'm going to hand out free money. I'm going to fire up the grill. And you start, what you do is you condition the devils that it's really not a good idea. You start to do something for someone else. And it becomes counterproductive. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to respond out of love, yeah. which means you're going to minister from the spirit when you want to beat somebody. Yeah. Come on. You don't respond back. You don't reward in the flesh when somebody comes at you in the flesh. You don't reward flesh with flesh. You don't do what has been done to you. You condition these evil spirits, these familiar spirits. You condition them that it's counterproductive. And that's why the Lord Jesus told me, and you'll hear me say it, I will pray over people and then I will say, the devil will wish that he never touched you to begin with. I say that a lot over people because essentially God takes that and turns it into good. He's working everything for your good to the, because you love God and you're called according to his purpose. You gotta remember that because you love God and you're called, is why he works everything out for the good. Amen. Those are the two things. So the devils do not want you to know that the reason they have to listen to you is because you're written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's because of, it's because of what he has already done, that the Lord has already done. You're defending it. You're not trying to obtain it. I don't go looking for devils to fight. I literally am sent to take over their, the city that they think is theirs. I, I literally go to a city and I, I want to take it over. I, I'm not picking a fight, it's, a, it's my city. Why, because I was sent. If you get a job, that's because you're supposed to take over that company. You're laughing, but spiritually, you might be the only covering there. Why do, you think, why do you think you have such a hard time at your job? The devils that are behind the scenes don't want you there because you're ruining everything. There to pick a fight. But it's because you were sent that you're picking a fight, and it's because your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life that actually there is a fight. So you can't take it personally. Job, Job just needed his friends to stay home. Because he, God is a good God, and the whole thing, it worked out the way it was supposed to anyway. But I tell the Lord all the time, don't you go bragging about me. <laughs> you, can you handle a couple more of these? Or okay, this this one's a good one too. This is I'm just destroying. My wife likes cows, so I can't say sacred cows, but. 
sacred lizards or something, you know, something bad. But um, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He was led by the Spirit to be tempted. God wasn't tempting him, but he led him by the Spirit into the desert and set it up. So your warfare, it should be because you're being led. Which means after Jesus did what he would did, if you notice the, you know, the Son of God needed angel visitation, it says that angels came and ministered to him after he went through what he went through. So if you're going through spiritual warfare, I'd be like excited because you're about to have an angel visitation. I mean, if Jesus needed it, you need it. The angels came and ministered to him. And that's the way you should look at it. And it says that, it says that in, in verse 10 and 11 in chapter 4, it says, Then the devil left him, and the angels came and attended to Jesus. Okay. All right. So this is how, this is how warfare really works. But it's become so complicated that it takes like a six weeks course in some ministries to get qualified to fight devils and a couple hundred bucks, you know. But I can do it for, I'll actually pay you. Second Corinthians 10.4 10, says, the weapons we fight are not um, weapons of this world. On the contrary, they are divine. They have divine power to demolish strongholds. And it says that to bring down every high thing or any thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. Okay, this is what Paul called warfare. Spiritual warfare was in the mental realm. And it's just, see, it's too simple, and it's, it's free. So it's, it's like people can't think it's real because it's so simple and it's free. Hey, I, gotta take, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. Wrench in your thing. Here's the works of the flesh. Galatians. One of them is witchcraft. He doesn't say it's spiritual warfare. He said that it, witchcraft is a, a is a manifestation of the work of the flesh. Why is witchcraft a work of the flesh? Because it starts with a thought. You have to be hijacked. A human being has to be hijacked because they are the authority on the earth. The highest order is a human being. And a born again human being is the highest order, period. Higher than angels. So, it's all about manifestation, which starts with a thought. I mean, if you want to bring the Word of God into it. And so that's why. All of the armor is defensive. Because you have it, you have to be convinced otherwise. Think about Adam and Eve. They had it, but they had to be convinced otherwise. Well, did God say? That's what's going on. This is the warfare that you're going through. But you're defending something you already have. So please, stop. Stop pursuing something you already have. You need to find out what you have. And you need to start to use your authority because you've embraced Jesus and his teachings. And he gave those people who did that the power to become sons of God. Now, I would rather be called a child of God or a son, because I identify as a male, <laughs> than what I see as being so I would rather like change yeah. and be a believer right. yeah. rather than a Christian. Right. I would rather be a son right. because the son goes to the front of the line. They don't have to stand in line. 
Why? Because I'm written. I'm in the book. Do you get it? You all get it? Can, can we go now? <laughs> because this is real warfare, and this is the boundaries that must be. You know, there's five in this series. This is not only not the second city. So there's more to come. I start talking about familiar spirits. You start talking about spirits of infirmity. So start talking about what you're dealing with on this. Start talking about what's happening in the other realm. Like, like uh, you know, it's interesting. There's people in this room that, that I knew they were going to work for me years before they did. And I didn't do a thing about it. Can you do that? Do you trust God enough that he's got this, that you don't jimmy with it? Oh, wait, they have the lights come off now? <laughs> what I saw on the other side is really untouchable by a human being. It's, you cannot touch certain things that are on the other side that are God's. And, and you've heard me say this. You know, I've, I release something I've never released and that is that there, there is actually multiple chess boards being played. And we're on number two. Number one is untouchable by a human being. God is playing a game against the enemy. And we're not involved with it. We're on the second level. And you all think you're all of this. And there, are, there's a, there is a cosmic, there's a cosmic game going on that God wins at that has nothing to do with you. You don't have the calendar. You don't get the updates. There's no emails from this. This war is, is beyond your pay grade. You don't have the clearance. And so you will see this when you get to heaven. You will see that God trusted you. God trusted you to be alive. Why? Because he knew that you would hear the word of God and mix it with faith and start swinging. And that you would not stop swinging until 800 Philistines were dead. Yes. And you, you didn't even have to go, you didn't even have to go to a gun show. It was a donkey jawbone. Samson. Samson was surrounded by the Philistines. He had no weapons. He looked down and there was a donkey jawbone there. So he picked it up and started swinging. And then when they interviewed him on Daystar, they, they asked us, what happened? He goes, I don't know. It's just a blur. He said, I just did what I had to do. He goes, well, so, so how did you take them all out? He goes, I don't know. Just watch the film. I don't know. See, to him, the power of God came on him. And God used whatever was close to him. There was no registered weapon. There was no training. There was nothing. That's what you got to understand. God had him take city gates off and carry them up on a mountain so that they couldn't get them back. The city gates represented the, the security of that city. So God would take the security away from the enemy. Do I need to go on? Because you can do this. He, he tied torches to foxes and sent them through their fields to light them because that was their provision. I mean, you can keep on going. But the bottom line was, is it wasn't his hair. It was his vow. The angel that appeared to his mom said, you and your child will never touch wine. A razor will never touch his hair. An angel was sent. And it says that God rose up Samson in order to pick a fight with the Philistines. It says he literally rose him up to find a reason to start a war with the Philistines, is what it says in the Bible. So Samson was only born to pick a fight. 
the anointing that came on him incited war. Man, this is good. I'm going to get this. I want this CD. <laughs> so your life, your presence, your, your calling, you being on the earth at this time, that has already been established on a chessboard that you have nothing, nothing at all to do with. You're on the second level, which means that you are being led by the Spirit on this earth. And what you are doing, what is placed in you, and the fact that you, you can generate faith by, by hearing the Word of God and manifesting that. But the first level is God's timetable. He never loses. Amen. You got to remember that. Right. On your level, yours is based on what you do with what you've been given. So it's, it's a free-for-all. You're not limited like you think you are. The table, the game table that you're limited on is the one that you're not invited to. So whether you do anything or you do something is up to you. And it's all based on the reward system. As a Christian, we're rewarded because we diligently seek God. We're rewarded for what we do with what we've been given, period. So all of you win. You just finish your race and you win. But what you receive in heaven is based on what you did down here with what you were given. And this is what I saw in heaven. And this was what's so surprising is that Jesus showed me the people that were on the fence. And the people that got to heaven, they didn't have the rewards that they could have had because they they took what the talent they were given and wrapped it up and hid it because Jesus is coming back. And it's going to hole up until he comes. And you sit and you eat your beans and rice in your, in your shelter, and he doesn't come. This happens in every generation, but I, it can't happen in this one. We're not going to do that, right? Okay. All right. So the Spirit of God is always willing. Remember that. Jesus said the Spirit's willing, the flesh is weak. The, the war is in, it, it ends. The war ends with your yes. When you agree with God, then the chessboard is yours. And I mean that. That means that you've got to sp start speaking to your body because right now, the way that things are going in your body is everything's against you. You got to turn it so that things are working for you within your body. It's the same with your mind. You got to change your mind. It's got to be a transformation so that all your thoughts aren't working against you. Because God is not opposing you. Your thoughts are opposing you based on the fact that there is a bleed over from the spiritual realm and Satan is wanting to hijack you through your mind because he can't hijack you in the spirit and I don't know why this is not being taught it's being taught opposite but there is no way that a devil can handle being inside of you it's all about dominion it's all about domain it's all about proximity the word is demonized it's not even demon possessed the word is demonized which has to do with proximity uh, that you got to be you got to be to the place where a devil has nothing to do with you there is no way that a devil would want to be inside of you if you are full of the Holy Spirit. So it's proximity. Please listen to me. Deliverance comes when you just say six feet, buddy, and you start making the marks. What do you think all this was? Why is it six and not seven? you got to make it so that the devil has nothing to do with you, that there would be no devil, no volunteers to come and harass you or try to 
obtain you in any way, in any area of your life. The reason why Satan has certain things is because you gave him that. You handed it over. You portion yourself out. Come on now. This is warfare. It all has to do with dominion. It all has to do with domain. Proximity. This is, this is your life that you've been given back. It's your life. And what you do with it, you produce fruit in your life. So the Spirit's always willing. So what happens is, is I would want this whole room. I would be so overjoyed. You wouldn't be, but I would be so overjoyed if the Lord said, don't ever go back there again. They don't need you anymore. I would be so happy because what that meant was all of you got it. And now the devil's screaming constantly because now he's going to have to deal with all of you. That's, that's what Jesus was working toward. He wasn't working toward, um, you know, getting a big ministry. So let's get to it. You got to turn it on the devil. You got to stop. You got to stop responding the way that he's expecting you to. Don't give him any information. And they just check it off. Well, that didn't work. That didn't work. See, they're trying to find the buttons they can push. Okay. All right, Lord, but it is time to quit. The, the, the next thing he told me is to, to address this. See, what happens is, is that we want to protect ourselves because we've been hurt and traumatized. Yeah. We've, been gone th we've gone through things. That's pretty. <laughs> and so we protect ourselves. But when we protect ourselves, what we're doing is we're overcompensating because we're not experiencing the acceptance. We're fully accepted. We've been adopted in. We, we don't have to dispute that. If you are fully convinced you could walk away and not answer someone that wants to pull you into an argument, you could walk away knowing that, knowing that you're fully convinced but if you have to overcompensate, pride comes in. And then from pride comes jealousy, because then you think, well, why do they have that and I don't? And, and you're already dealing with pride. And pride is just overcompensating. But if you knew your value and that you were accepted, then you wouldn't defend yourself. Okay, but then... The jealousy comes in with you're thinking that others are being blessed and you're not. But that is because there's pride. Because you are fully accepted, you don't have to prove yourself. So you, you, you already have it. I'm telling you, if you wake up tomorrow morning and you realize that the reason the devils are afraid of you is because you're written in the Lamb's Book of Life, if you do that tomorrow, you won't need me again. I, I'm serious about that. The body of Christ wouldn't need the fivefold if they were perfected in love because it says that when this all happens, we're not going to need prophecy anymore. We're not going to need any of the gifts of spirit, tongues, or cease, everything. Why? Because we're perfected in love. That all those things will pass. They won't be needed anymore. Prophecy won't be needed anymore. The, the gifts of spirit wouldn't be needed anymore. But that was Paul's point was is that they haven't ceased because we haven't reached that perfection yet. So the spirit's going to want to build you up to the place where you're perfected in love, which means you don't have to defend your position. Because you were chosen. You. You didn't choose yourself. And he, you had nothing to do with it. Listen, you want to know what I saw in heaven? I saw the list. I saw the list. It's on the first chessboard. You're on the first 
chessboard at, on the list, but you don't get to play that. You literally, literally, you were bought and, and chosen before the foundations of the world. And it's not predestination where he just tells you that this is what you're going to believe. This is what, it's the fact that he bought everyone. And Paul said that even the good works that we were to do in Christ were predestined. The good works that we were to do. How can he say that? Because God had this already planned and written. And it's on the first chessboard, which is, has nothing to do with you. You can't, you can't do anything about what he's already decided for you. Except just say no. The second chessboard is your yes. It's your reward. It's the reward system. That's the game board you play off of. What do you think Paul's talking about at the end of chapter 8? I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it because you all are just staring at me. I want to show you. I want to show you. No, I want to show you something. It's still early, right? Is it, is it 8 here? Is it still 8? Okay. What, what time do you all get out? Well, you don't even have Sunday, right? Sunday service, Sunday night. Okay. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. All right, let's just start, let's start where, where the, this, this verse 26, verse 26 of Romans 8, there's, 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 there's two things that are happening here. After you get, when you get to verse 15 is the first, is the first uh, notch of heat. Because the first notch of heat, which hardly anybody's walking it. That pe most people have not got to even, even verse 15 in Romans yet of 8. Okay, but 15 says that we are adopted in. And it says a spirit of acceptance in Aramaic. So it says, you have received the spirit of full acceptance or the spirit of adoption as you know it. Um, this is where the, it turns up a whole bunch. And you will never be orphaned again. You are enfolded or grafted into the family of God. You will never be orphaned, for as he rises up within us, our spirits join him in saying the words of tender affection, beloved Father. For the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us. As he whispers into our innermost being, you are God's beloved child. Okay, that is the absolute truth. All right, I will show you, I will show you that if you get that verse and then you go down to 26, which is the next notch up. In a similar way, the Holy Spirit takes hold of us. You don't take hold of him. He takes hold of you. But he doesn't take hold of you when you're strong. He takes hold of you and empowers you in your human frailty, in your weakness. So most of us don't qualify if we're prideful, which is what Satan battles us to get prideful for protection. We're thinking we're protecting ourselves. But God's setting us up for the Holy Spirit to come in and to super intercede and lift us up in, into this pleading that is too deep for words. And it says that God, who is the searcher of the heart, knows fully our longings, yet he also understands the desires of the Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit passionately pleads before God for us, his holy ones, in perfect harmony with God's plan and our destiny. Okay, the Holy Spirit does this in our weakness. This is the second board. This is the rubber meets the road down here. 
This is whether you had coffee or not. But then after that's done in verse 27, this is where it goes to the first board. And if you read, if you read 28 through the end from the God's first board up on top that you have nothing to do with, you'll get what I'm trying to tell you here. Is because down here, it's all about discovery. It's all about manifestation. So we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together for good. That's because that's because of the game. Can you believe that? That anybody have to be brave enough to say it? But there is a part of God that you will never know. You're not going to ever be able to understand him completely. What you have is what you saw through Jesus Christ. But the last time I checked, he's seated at the right hand of the Father. So there's the Father and the Son. So yeah. Yeah, put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> For we are his lovers who have been called, called to fulfill his design purpose. So he designed a purpose that is beyond our comprehension. He knew all about us before we were born. Okay, so... And you're worried about tomorrow? <laughs> he destined us from the beginning to share the likeness of his son. That will get you kicked out of church. Not this church, but. We're his lovers who have been called it to fulfill his design purpose. Verse 29, for he knew all about us before we were born and destined us from the beginning to share the light of the son. This means that the son is the oldest among a vast family of brothers and sisters who will become just like him. It's I'm just like him. That will get you kicked out of church. Having determined, oh, this is, you know, this is like, this is beyond the chessboard that you play on. It says here, having determined our destiny ahead of time, he called us to himself and transferred his perfect righteousness to everyone he called. And those he possesses, those who possess his perfect righteousness, he co-glorified with his son. Oh, you're in a tent now outside the church now. You're in a tent. You're in a tent. Yeah, with no air conditioning. Are you kidding me? He co-glorified with his son. That means that what he gave the son, he gave us. I mean, according to scripture. So verse 31 says, so what does this all mean? Please tell us. If God has determined to stand with us, who could ever stand against us? Why? Because of the first chessboard. So I'm not worried about this country. I'm actually concerned about you. Why? Because I am called to the 300. Not the 42,000 or whatever. I'm, I'm, what I'm concerned about is those who discern their place on this earth and do not tread where they're not supposed to tread. And that is, is that I don't understand fatherhood. But I'm learning about sonship. Yeah. But if I don't understand fatherhood, I can't understand sonship. And the bottom line is, is all of us need a lesson in it. We need to understand fatherhood. I don't understand it. I don't understand and maybe it's because I don't see it down here. Maybe I haven't experienced it like I should. And so you grow up and you don't really understand. And so you accept lower in your life than you should. And that's what you get, lower than you should. All right, so from now on, 
all of you, I can continue on. It's, you can read it yourself. But it just, gets, it just gets hotter to where it's white hot. And the bottom line is, is that nothing is going to condemn us. Nothing's going to separate us. Why? Because God did this all for us before. And we had nothing to do with it. We weren't in the meetings. We had nothing to do with it. We weren't inquired of. We, do, we didn't vote on it. With nothing. And this is that chessboard that the, the church does it. The church has hidden this from us. Is that God has already made decisions about your life. And he is fully convinced of something that you may not even know anything about, which is concerns me. But not only that, that even if you found out about it, it might be too much for you. Well, how am I going to do that? Now, like I kid about this, but in my first year of college, I was learning Greek and Hebrew. And I couldn't even speak English because I was from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> and, um, and, and all you Yunts in here would know that. And, and I mean, I talked about the creek, the crick that was in my yard. And then, well, what's a crick? Well, but just like when I, when I came down here, you all, I don't know what you all is. I mean, I used to rent a U-Haul when I'd move. And man, if that's what you're talking about. I mean, you know how hard it is to get unsweetened tea down here in the South? I mean, if there isn't like crystals growing in the, in the, in the, uh, I mean, you know, it has to be sugar crystals like growing in the, in the tea, you know, it's got to be like it. But what I'm saying is, is that we have interpreted God and we think, we think we need to learn certain things, but we haven't even learned English yet. We haven't even got to the basics of God is a loving father that doesn't do these things and that he wants to transfer these things to you and then through you. But if he doesn't get it to you, you can't transfer it through you. You can't give it out if you don't have it. Amen? Okay. All right. Well, I was going to ask the worship team to come up, but they <laughs> well, we only have that one airplane this week. All right. So all of you, all of you have been enlightened by the Spirit of God. And I have given you, you if, if I were you, I would listen to this over and over again. The reason why is, is that warfare is based on defending what you already have, not on obtaining something that's already been given. So remember that when you sit in church and you're being ministered to, the ministry has to be from the other realm toward you, but it has to take you up to where you should be. And it is all based on the second level, which is re the reward system. So there's an incentive to manifest God in this life. That's our calling. The church is to manifest God's glory. That's the mystery that Paul talked about that's revealed. It doesn't have to do with some deep secret that only certain people know. And you have to buy their CD series. It's based on Paul saying that it's been revealed. It was hidden in times past, but now it has been revealed. And that is, is that God is revealing his glory through the church. That's all of us together. So what just came in, did you, in this room, if, you, if I would just stay a couple more minutes, you would start to feel the unity come in because... It's time for the Holy Spirit to want to agree through all of us on, on something, touching something. Because it's going to be given to us. And, and what I know the Spirit wants is he wants to create space. He wants to create some space between you and your war. The war's gotten really close. And you're tense. You can't see everything that's going on, but you can feel it. And the Lord wants to create space so that you can bear up under it. Amen.
Okay, let's stand. 816. Father, you have had your way tonight. You've had your way. The Spirit of the Lord has spoken the truth. Father, now confirm your word with signs and wonders. Start to minister to your people. Extend your hand right now, Father, and heal. Heal the sick, Father, right now. Confirm your word with signs and wonders, Lord. Glorify your name. Glor your name has been glorified. Your son has been glorified. Lord, we have not promoted ourselves here. We have promoted you. We have, we have spoken well of you, Lord. And a book of remembrance is written that we spoke well of you. Father, we all agree it's touching this one thing, that the war not only has not, not gotten into us, but we have rightfully allowed the Holy Spirit to draw the boundaries for our life. And we are not allowing the enemy to have proximity with us. Wow. 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 Wow, 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 wow. Wow. You know, you know, the Spirit of the Lord, I just saw him. I just, I mean, I know who this individual is that are in this room. But he, he just, he clearly just grabbed this person and said, I'm not ever letting go of you. And they're in this room. I mean, I almost called their name out. I saw God grab this person from behind and say, you don't got a chance. You don't got a chance. And I see that's what he's doing to his body right, his, right now. All of your faces, you should see your faces. You're glowing with the glory of God. Your face is empty. Hallelujah. Ho si la marindro se si cola veredre shit as kishita. Yeah, so the Spirit just said through me, proceed no further. He's telling the enemy, proceed no further. All I did was pray in tongues, proceed no further. Listen to me, because I had the spirits to tell me because we're, we're, we're going to do something here. I remember the time. I can't give too many details because these people are watching probably. But I was, I was involved where I had to go to someone that I was actually under. And I said, I am not going to be part of this any longer. You're married and you have a girlfriend. I'm done. And I, I, gave that, I gave them a choice. I said, okay, I'm no, longer, I'm no longer involved in this ministry. But this is what you need to do, and you need to do it right away, or you're going to lose everything. You either, you either do what you're, you're, you're going to do. You make a decision right now. So I got fired big deal now listen to me I went out and I went running and as I was running all of a sudden in the desert everything disappeared and I saw Jesus and he was in his priestly outfit and he had red and blue on in a gold breastplate and yet he was dressed as a warrior and as I was running I could hear my feet hitting and the pace that I was running, but I could not see the ground anymore. I was in the spirit realm and there to my left, he came toward me as I'm running. I'm not running anymore, I'm walking toward me. I can still hear my feet on the earth. And I kept running on the path that I would, would normally run on. And he came up to me and he had a sword that was sheathed 
and he was in a priestly outfit, but his, he had a gold breastplate on, and it was this really deep blue and red tunics that he had overlaid. There were two different colors, red and a blue, and then gold. It looked awesome. But he was dressed as a warrior. And he said, Kevin, because you have taken a stand for me, he said, I am taking a stand for you, and I'm going to go and slay all your enemies. Amen. And he pulled that sword out. And he turned around and he went and he defended me. Because I had taken a stand for what was right. You have no idea how many times Kathy and I have had to do that. But we'll just keep it at that because they might be all watching. But we've had to walk away and say, you know what? No, you're not going to do this. Paul said, listen, you know that one? Turn him over to Satan during the service. Turn him over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh so that his soul could be saved. You see, if you don't do these kind of things, you can't help anybody because we are the authority. Ananias and Sapphira probably some of the biggest givers in the church, probably on the board. I mean, I know, I know, I know people, I know ministers have done worse than them, and they're still alive. Why am I saying this? No one else will. I have no idea. There's no reason for me and Kathy to be in the wanna Why would we want to do that? I'd rather go fishing. I'd rather just feed the poor. I'd rather just, just travel, pilot my own jet, and just talk about Jesus and be in the ministry. Because if that's ministry, I don't want it. And that's, that's why you're here. That's why you're at this church. That's why you follow us at Warrior Notes. It's because the bottom line is, is that we know there's more. And we just read about it. And that we have been kept out of our position and our authority and the fact that we are royalty and I heard the spirit say you no longer have to prove you're my son hallelujah pastor where's Mike at Chris come Now think about this. Think about this. All the gifts of spirit were nothing if it wasn't done through love. But nobody reads chapter 13 because it's inconveniently placed in between two books that are really cool about the gifts of spirit. (laughs) And then we had the overemphasis of faith. And and then we found out that actually faith works through love. Oh boy. Must have threw the directions away and tried to build it ourselves, huh? Then you blame Amazon. This thing doesn't work. You want to ship it back. Well, it has to work through love. Okay, so this is how God sets it up. God sets it up that he accepts you. And then what has to happen is we have to find people that we can get with and fellowship with and grow with where we're safe. You got it? And that is what God put in me, is to make a safe place where people can grow and get together and agree. So I want, I want, they're they're my staff, but they're also here, this is their church. I mean, it's Jesus' church. I mean, if it ever becomes their church, you'll know it. But their, their authority in this region, and so, I believe that if we agree as touching whatever it is that God has assigned for this area, and then we'll agree for the body of Christ as well, but I, and, and we can do that too, but I want them to pray from the Spirit for this area, this location, 
and I want God to have his way because what I want is I want them to own this whole place. I mean, I want the whole thing. And if, and if it isn't here, then it's somewhere else. But the reason why is, is that there is no way, if you keep it about helping people, there's no way you're going to stay where you're at. They just, just ask us at Warrior Notes. We always make it about people. Okay, so I, they're, they are supposed to pray right now, and you're supposed to agree for this area, and then we will pray for all those watching in their countries, the body of Christ. This, this unity, the unity that's happening is because of that fire. What's happening is the stuff that is, is standing between us, all of us, is being burned out. It's being exposed. Amen. So, Pastor, go ahead. Just pray by the Spirit. It's going to be short or long. Like, come on up. Come closer. What you doing? And, Kevin, I also saw, because of what you shared tonight, everybody got in, like, a boxing stance. And they're ready. They're ready to fight. They're ready to stand. And I saw you do that. You're not playing around anymore. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, Amen. in this whole area, Lord, we are not playing around anymore. Amen. Lord, we ask you to pour out your spirit in a great and mighty way. Lord, that fire that it's in the heavenlies, Lord, let it come down, Lord, and consume all your enemies, Lord. Let it bring such a holiness in this area. Lord, we pray for a move of your spirit that Concord and Charlotte and Kannapolis and the surrounding area has never seen in the history of the world, Lord. I pray that rivers of living water flow, Lord, through this area, God. I thank you that you're going to bring them in. Lord, I see you bringing them in from the north, south, east, and the west, Father. You are gathering your people. You are gathering us together by your spirit, Lord. Lord, I see us together with one voice, one fire, one calling, one purpose, and that's to glorify your name, Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, we call home every prodigal. We call home everyone that is in this area. We call you in from every direction. In the name of Jesus, every lost son, every lost daughter, I call you forth in the name of Jesus. And I speak in right now, Father, that a fire, a fire would be poured out on this land like never before. Father, let it flood through the streets of Charlotte, through the streets of Cabarrus, Lord, through the homes right now, I pray for angel visitations. I thank you that glory is flooding the homes of this region right now. And we just declare and speak right now that the glory has come, that the foundation of the church has been established in this place, and that from this moment forward, God's people will grow. Every hindrance is being removed. Every demonic oppression is being removed. And we speak that the church will rise, the people will rise, and we will lift him up. We will lift him up, and all men are being drawn unto him right now in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, we pray for the young people in this area. Oh, we ask for your fire, your fire, your transforming fire to fall on every child and every young person, every teenager, every college student. We declare it today in the mighty name of Jesus. All those that are confused, we pray for the identity of Jesus Christ, that you were created in the very image of God, that you will have understanding of the perfect love of God in your life. Father, the schools, the local schools, we thank you for revival in the schools right now in Jesus' name. Touch every young person in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yeah. Holy Spirit. Touch your people, the lost shall be found. Blind eyes shall be opened. Every dark place shall be made light. 
Every dark place shall be made light. It shall be made light. Holy Spirit, make light. Revelation light, come like a flood to your people. Life, come back to your church. Prodigal sons and daughters are no longer lost. They're found and they're running home. And fathers are opening their arms to receive them in love and forgiveness and grace. May your love cover all offenses. There shall be no more brokenness in families and in homes where there shall be restoration and there shall be healing. Healing to the family unit in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, I feel your fire right now. And I pray for the fire of God right now for every person in this place, Lord. That they would not leave this place the same, Lord. Lord, that they will take it to the next level, God. So, Lord, I pray for the mighty baptism of the fire of God. Lord, I pray for souls, Lord, like never before, Lord, that you would stir us up, Lord, for the lost. Lord, give us a burden like never before, Lord. Lord, for our uh, neighbors, God. Lord, for our co-workers, Lord, for our families, Lord. We will not give up. We will not give in. And we will fight. And we will fight. Lord, we will leave the 99 and go after the one. Lord, you will burden our hearts. Give us dreams, Lord. Give us visions, Lord. Lord, send us, Lord, as divine appointments, Lord. As we fill up our gas tanks. As we get groceries, Lord. Speak to our heart, Lord, to reach out to those people. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Whoo. Thank you, Father. I just keep, I have this scripture going off in my spirit. I'm just going to speak it over all of us. It's not by might, not by power, says the Lord, but by my spirit. Let's all say that together. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. By my spirit. Thank you, Father, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Shita la stora shira shedele shte la shita veshe. Let's just release the Holy Spirit. Let Him pray through you. Shalakila mondor rababa se borraba ba shukur ramama se save save shavoto rasteke shotoko arase isa aso maso maso shikate ishike. It turns. It turns. It turns, it turns, Shabalabiato, Idiato. He that troubles you shall bear his own shame, the word says. Galavundo Ramase, Isanande Eshoto, Ivahahaha, Joy, 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 Hallelujah, more joy, Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Ha ha, ha ha, tongues of fire. Tongues of fire, Lord. We thank you for a quick work. Quick work. Quick work. Shalavila Yanondo. Ora base corra halavoto. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Holy. 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 You are holy, Lord. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. You are holy. So holy. Purity. Purity, purity and victory. Una masse, una masse, ila venekete, ala vesonoto, uda vashele, oreato, oreato, oreato bashe. Hu, hallelujah, shalabuto. Baje, baje, baje. Baje, baje, baje. Baje, baje, baje. Baje, non do ramasto. O ramasse queriasto. O rabasse quitovo. O ramasse nandeste. Hola basse queriaste. Sototo. Borrasse. Ishanete, Ishanato. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for living in us and resting on us. 
and flowing through us, in us and on us and all around us. Ha ha ha, shakate, oravaso, oravaso, isate. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak over every physical body in this room and everybody watching. From the top of their head to the soles of their feet, we speak healing. Every cell in your body will line up in the name of Jesus. White blood cells, red blood cells will line up in the name of Jesus. Where there needs to be increase, we speak increase. Where there needs to be decrease, we speak decrease in the name of Jesus. Those chemical imbalances will be balanced in the name of Jesus. Those heart conditions, diabetes, everything that is not of you, God, be gone in the name of Jesus. We speak healing, and we stand on your word that by your stripes we are healed, and we command our physical body right now to line up, line up, homeostasis in the name of Jesus, line up, line up right now in the name of Jesus. We speak healing and we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I, re- I break rejection right now in this room. I break the spirit that is influencing people to feel as though they're not valued or accepted. We break that rejection now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that these evil spirits are conquered and that they are driven out right now. And I thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit, who is a spirit of full acceptance, is able to minister to everyone right now. And the Lord says, you're forgiven, you're forgiven, and you're accepted, you're accepted, you're received into my house, says the Lord. You're received into my family. You're mine, you're mine, you're mine. I love you. You're mine. Full acceptance. Rejection has to go right now. You got to go. Rejection has to go right now. No more self hatred. We break the cycle of self-hatred and rejection right now in Jesus' name. Oh, boy. Oh. Do you have another prayer on that matter with the rejection? Do you have anything else? Good. Well, Father, I ask you in Jesus' name, Lord, to fill every heart with your love, with that Father's love. I release that over you now in Jesus' name. Lord, it's like a wave coming over them even now, Lord. I pray for that Father's love, that you would experience the embrace of the Father right now in Jesus' name. You are loved. Like Kevin said, you are accepted. I just feel the power of God. I'm telling you, the love of God is shed abroad in your heart. And it's going to start to overflow out of you. It's going to start to overflow out of you. It's going to begin to take you over. You're going to have such a new love for even yourself and those around you. Father, bless your people, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for these people. Lord, I pray that you bless them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. I thank you that every demonic work that's been assigned against them is broken in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that they will prosper with whatever they put their hand to. Lord, I thank you for increasing their finances. Those who are looking for new jobs, Lord, I pray that even this week, Lord, a new job becomes available, Lord. 
Those in here who have businesses, I pray for an increase in clients in Jesus' name. I pray for health of your family, of your body, over your loved ones. You're coming in as blessed and you're going out as blessed. I thank you, Lord, that you're sending your latter rain on every one of us, Lord. And Lord, you are a good God and you do good things and our end is going to be great. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, we love you here at Antioch. God bless you. We'll see you next time.